We have a lot of food storage. The main reason for the pipes is looks. Every major catastrophe that could happen, he's got the part for it underneath this couch. We carry the motorcycles with us because they are street legal. We put so much work in it, I want to live in it for a while longer. <laughs> I'm Amber, this is Eli, and this is Magnolia, the Parish School. Welcome inside the Parish Schoolie. We are here in the kitchen. My husband and I are born and raised in Cajun country, so we love to cook. We have 10 feet of counter space, huge sink, a bar area. We scrapped a lot of pieces from an RV, such as the propane stove and a lot of hinges and door handles and latches that we were able to save some money on. So our countertops are cedar wood that we used epoxy to biscuit together. This bar area is a deep pour that I inlaid with some dried flowers. The finish on it is actually natural. It's satin. We didn't want a glossy finish and we went with Odie's oil. I picked a big sink because we originally wanted to do a washer and dryer and then I was like, it's too much plumbing and it's too much power. So I picked a big sink so I can wash clothes and fit our big pots in it. I just didn't want to wash a pot inside a bowl that was smaller than it. And we've got a lot of big pots to cook like gumbo and jambalaya and etouffee. So they're, they're big dishes. I think we've got about eight feet of storage on top. We've got medicine and laundry detergent, bowls and plates and spices. And then here we have one of our freshwater tanks. We have 30 under here and I believe 60 in the back, it's 90 total. There's also more storage in the bar area that we don't even use for kitchen supplies. It's got Eli's shoes and some camera equipment. We got lucky with the RV we demolished. We got a four burner propane stove. I would recommend it though, because there's a couple of people, you know, that have induction and they, they don't like it because you can't cook if there's no sun. Our backsplash is actually peel and stick tile. Uh, I was originally going to go with real tile. I was worried about it breaking because these aren't like studded walls. So it's just peel and stick from Walmart. This cutting board is actually from one of Eli's trips to Africa. Moving on back from the kitchen, we have our hallway, which we filled with a slide out pantry and a full fridge and freezer. We have a lot of food storage. We love to cook. Eli got this when he was working with vending machines for a couple of years. They fixed it up. It's really nice because we can see what's in it and not have to open it. Since we got this, we, we wanted a, a freezer to match that was nice and stand up and not in an ice chest type style. We're freezer people. We got plenty of meals in there. <laughs> We have light switches to turn this off because it's pretty bright. The cooler and freezer are pretty efficient. I think they run like two and a half amps a piece. Um, the freezer's a little less efficient, but it's, it's efficient for what it is. This section is our living room. We have a six foot couch. It pulls out into a full size queen. We've got plenty of storage underneath. Eli has every major catastrophe that could happen. He's got the part for it underneath this couch. Turbo, EP44, master cylinder, they're all here. <laughs> the mattress part of it is just a mattress topper, like three inch mattress topper. This pillow has clothes in it actually. It's a nice zipper pillow. So there's even storage in the pillows. We use this space quite a lot. It's a great hangout space, especially with the, the bar, all the seats are in one area. We've had guests stay over. My sister stayed over for a couple of nights on our guest bed. What I would do differently with this couch is build like proper lumbar support. It just got a flat back. So these like pillows are actually pretty necessary. <laughs> when you sit on the couch, you need extra lumbar support. This actually lifts up. I don't use it at all to lift up to access the stuff. I actually created doors. It wasn't easy to access. You had to move all the, the mattresses and cushions to access, so I changed it. We are a self-converted bus. We've been working on this thing for over four years now. We are part-timers, I guess you can say. We live a bus life, but it's a different type of bus life. We've lived in the bus a year unfinished and now, we're restarting it finished. <laughs> this is our first big trip with all our functions in place. And it is very exciting after four years, 
to see it all come to life. Our main goal is to not pay rent. I say we're currently part-timers because we live on a bus dealership, a big bus yard, and we still don't pay rent. We maintain the property in exchange to stay there, but we are hitting the road. We're doing a four, three, four month trip currently now that the bus is finished. We put so much work in it, I wanna live in it for a while longer. <laughs> on the opposite side of the kitchen, we have pretty much an open area we added this dresser for a little more storage, but it kind of moves around wherever we please. I've got another seat here. It's my little Triceratops. He also doubles as some more storage. The ledge is also the same cedar that we used in our kitchen. It's just one of the smaller pieces and I did more epoxy. Got a couple of hidden flowers in there as well. Most of my plants are trimmings, clippings that like I find out in the wild or at people's homes, they, I ask for a leaf and they say yes. I think this Monstera was the only one like I actually bought. On this back wall here, we have our electrical system and this awesome peel and stick wallpaper. It was pretty easy to use and pretty cheap to find. Our ceiling is refurbished siding from a 1930s house. I spent about a week denailing it and then planing it. We spent probably another week putting it up. Then Eli did a couple of coats of polyurethane. We have two inches of closed cell spray foam, which we find it really makes a difference. I mean, it still gets hot in here, it's a bus, but don't have to run our AC too much. All right, we're in the hallway. We have plenty of storage in the hallway. We have his and her closets. And this is a huge sunroof that we keep covered during the summer because it really lets in a lot of heat. We have this full-sized mirror, which I had to have in here. And it is hiding our electrical closet. And I attached a another latch we scrapped from the RV project to keep it closed. We have a Magnum inverter, an Outback charge controller, and 450 AGM amp hours. We are now in our bathroom. I modeled the style after New Orleans ho shotgun homes. Eli is too tall to fit in the corner and I wanted to make sure he was comfortable showering in his own house. So we have to walk through the shower to get to the bedroom and around this corner is our toilet. We have a composting toilet. We used the Johnny Compost 3D printed kit, really cost effective. Eli did the, the bulk work, which was the studs and the, the concrete board, and then he, he let me fly with the red guard and the tile. I had no budget for the bathroom. I wanted it to be as pretty as possible, so I just went all out. We did real tile, we did glass tile, we did stone floor, we did epoxy grout, exposed copper, a detachable head. I wanted to go all out with our our shower. Since it was going to take up so much room, I wanted to enjoy walking through it. On this side is our counter space. Well, I did another epoxy pour with the cedar and I really, really wanted a bowl sink for no reason. This is really just kind of for water protecting just in case anything comes this way. We have a bus mirror that's going to eventually go there, but we haven't installed that either. And a faucet still needs to go here. So this is our least finished side on our bathroom. <laughs> I really love this like accent piece right here. I, I, don't, I don't know what it was. I had a vision for this bathroom when there was nothing in the bus and it, it has gone according to plan. So I'm really happy about our bathroom. I did forget to mention one little thing about our light covers is they are original from the bus. They've got the bluebird on it and everything and it it's a little water sealant for us for these LEDs in the bathroom specifically. We're where the magic happens in our bedroom. It is a queen size bed. The room could fit a king but it would require a new bed frame. There is a ton of storage underneath. I think it's a 10 inch mattress and it's it can lift up on the struts to access it. We also have the little headboard has access for a laundry basket and the other side is closed off, but it has a little compartment for our extra sheets and stuff. We do plan to put more cabinetry back here, but for now the open shelves work for what we've got. My favorite part is just the bed in general. It's a really comfy bed. Rec Pro hooked us up with it. They've got a lot of RV stuff you could use for your build. Eli really, really likes the RV windows we installed. He closed in like the last six windows of our bus 
and for the year that we were living in it, like unfinished, it was pretty stuffy back here. We were like opening our entire back door to let in a vent. And I was like, we have to put in some windows back here. <laughs> and he fought me for a while. And, and now that they're in, he's like, I love them. <laughs> so Eli really enjoys the windows. They came with screens and everything. So they're perfect for a breeze. <laughs> this is the cockpit. This is where all the magic happens. This bus has had a hard, long life. We're running a little over 300,000 miles. Along the way, we found out our transmission was burnt. So we have converted our transmission to a manual. We bought a donor bus, the identical bus. So there was no stress of bolt for bolt matching up. We've redone the whole cockpit. We've taken all the heater cores out. Now this is all the same wood that we have as our countertops. I've spent lots of hours fine tuning the mechanics of this bus and making sure everything was good to take us around the country. We've spent more time on mechanics than we actually have building this bus. This bus is a 2000 Freightliner. It's got a 5924 valve and an Eaton Fuller five speed. Some of the gauges I've added are fuel pressure, boost, exhaust temperature, and oil temperature. So I've added almost, almost every other gauge that you can read, which has been super helpful. Anytime there's a failure, I tend to know what it is before I even step out of the bus because of all these gauges. We have a 12,000 BTU mini split on board. Unfortunately, we cannot run it off grid right now. Our battery bank is lacking. We have 400 amp hours of AGM. The mini split and the hot water heater are the only things that we have to be plugged in for. I do AC and refrigeration work. So I acquired this very early on in the build. I sat around for two years before I installed it. We hung the outside unit underneath the bus, covered it in expanded metal, and it has worked really good so far. My favorite part of my dash is all the work I've put into converting this bus to a manual. Even though it's a little more stressful to drive, it is excellent to talk about. We have really enjoyed the bus life. We have found a passion dealing with buses and working on these buses. We currently have a second bus that's a blank canvas that we are undecided if we're gonna convert and keep for ourselves or just make some money off of. The, the tiny community itself is is great. The, the people are awesome and kind and giving and loving and... We've met, we've experienced much more love than we have snobs, which is amazing. We can walk up to nearly anyone with a bus and or with a tiny home and connect and as if as if buddy has been buddies for years. This is our driver's side. This is my favorite part of the bus. This is our exhaust. These are our pipes. They're all the original bus exhaust. We just cutted them, rerouted them, Y piped them, and put a heat wrap on them. So this bus is a straight piped Cummins, and it sounds like it. The main reason for the pipes is looks. Second reason is sound. The third reason is the space that it has freed up underneath the bus. Some people would say that's most important, but it's not most important to me. We freed up a lot of real estate, which has allowed us to mount boxes and mount our gray water tank without any headache. My boxes are tools, tools, and more tools. Amber's got all the clothes inside and I've got all the tools outside. So we mounted these boxes just days before leaving for this event. We got them for a great price. We put a lot of hours and sweat equity into sanding, and repainting these boxes, resealing them, and getting them mounted. So my wife is the brains in the relationship. She says none of the mechanics and oils need to go on the driver's side. When we break down, we don't need to be walking on the traffic side. So this side is all long-term tools, corded power tools, carpentry tools, refrigeration tools, everything to try to make some money. And the other side is everything we need when we break down. This is our back deck. We have two dual sport motorcycles. We have not fit both of them back here at the same time. We have not been brave enough, but we carry one bike at a time. This also allows for many spare parts and many extra things along with the bike. The back deck, we used C-channel and extended it three and a half feet and just stuck the bumper back on. 
And then we put our nice LED strips and flush mounted our original lights. That way our bikes didn't break our lenses. We carry the motorcycles with us because they are street legal, but they are also very dirt and sand friendly. They're dual sports, so we can go on road, off road, and you need a secondary vehicle. This bus is way too large to be pulling out every time we need onions and bell peppers and bananas. We hop on the bike and we can do comfortably 20 miles round trip. We went a few years with no panels, and now we are off grid. We've been sitting here for 10 days off grid, and hopefully we're gonna be putting two more panels up at this event, but so far we have 790 watts and we're running a 12 volt system. This allows us to run everything we need during the day and only stress a little bit during the night. We are Parish Schoolie on basically any platform, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. We do it all, except for Twitter. Thanks for watching. <laughs>